Green Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome to our Steelers Week 12 recap. I'm your host, Jim Sella, here with Jay Dash. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Indianapolis Colts 28-7 to on Thanksgiving Day. Dash, we both predicted a big victory for Pittsburgh, mostly just because Scott Tolzien was playing for the Colts, and that dude is straight garbage. Although he put up, I don't want to say good numbers, but I guess decent numbers for a guy with as little experience as he has. Yeah, I'm not going to say he's garbage. Look, like you said, he has little experience in the NFL. He's been around for a while. He went 22 of 36, 205 yards and a touchdown, had the two interceptions, one to Mike Mitchell, one to Willie Gay. But he got no help from his receivers either. T.Y. Hilton dropped a bomb right down the right side of the sidelines that would have been a touchdown, it looked like. Dante Moncrief dropped a long pass down the left sidelines that would have probably took him around the 10 or 5 yard line. And Philip Dorsett dropped a pass in the end zone that would have been a touchdown as well. So really Tolzien to me looked like a pretty solid backup quarterback. What about the Steelers' rush defense? The Colts had 23 attempts for 91 yards. That's better than they had been doing, you know, when they were giving up two hundo to Jay Ajayi. But is it is it back yet? Are we back to where we were through those first five games? Or is it even going to be able to get back with Cam Hayward out? Well, I like what I've seen out of the defense in stopping the run game. You look, Frank Gore actually had 15 carries for 28 yards. That's their starting running back. Jordan Todman, three carries, 37 yards. So he got a, mixed in a little bit and bro, broke a 19-yard gain. Robert Turbin, two carries for 20 yards. He actually broke an 18-yard gain. So it was just a couple plays in this game that made it look worse than it actually was. I thought they did a very good job at stopping the run. And the defense as a whole look great to me. I mean, this defensive backfield does look better than in years past, especially with Artie Burns in now. But it's and really Sean Davis. The the yeah, Davis as well. He made a big stop there at the goal line in this game. But to me, the difference from last year to this year in why why it didn't look the same was the front seven. And now it actually seems like over the past two games, this front seven is getting back on track a little bit. And they're starting to rush more. They they were rushing four or five more often in this game, kind of like they were last week against the Cleveland Browns, whereas most of the season they were just trying to do it with three people. Yeah, it was nice to see Lawrence Timmons getting into the mix again. He had 10 tackles, two assisted. He didn't have any sacks this week, but he was getting towards the quarterback, and I like seeing him come off the edge. Yeah, I, And I know we talked about this last week. If he gives you a team-friendly deal – I'm bringing that dude back on a three-year deal. You probably keep him for those two of the three. If if he can keep coming off the edge like that and be a rotational guy, maybe not necessarily the starter in the middle or, or worrying about pass protection. But, you know, this linebacker core seems to have awakened. I, I like what they're doing. They didn't get as many sacks as they did against Cleveland, but Cleveland has given up a league-high 45 sacks this year. So, obviously, you didn't expect them to get eight. But like you said, with these younger DBs, and we talked about this kind of in the bye week, you know, will Artie Burns and Sean Davis start to play a little better down the stretch now that they've got their feet wet a little bit? And it looks like that's actually going to start happening. And I think they found the right groupings as far as the linebackers go uh, with Harrison and Chicolo and Motes and Jones and then Dupree obviously being able to start now. I think Dupree brings a lot to them, and this defense could really get back on track and play even better, I think, than they were when they were 4-1. I'll tell you who else has been helping this defense out, and that is Javon Hargrave. He has looked good over the past couple games as well. Again, two QB hits in his game and got a sack as well. So he's he's definitely a a difference maker on this defense, at least has been over the past couple games. He's got a long way to go before you can actually trust him, but... I like their draft class here, man. Let me ask you this, and I know we're not going to get into the deep debate of 3-4 over 4-3, blah, 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 blah. But do you think Hargrave is a better D-tackle in a 4-3, or do you think he fits that pure nose tackle style of a 3-4? Obviously similar to Casey Hampton, although it doesn't look like he swallowed the earth. 
Yeah, I mean, I like him in the 3-4. I also like two moving around on that defensive line as well, though. So, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like them switching it up between three and four, th- uh, 3-4 and a 4-3. Could you imagine if we played a 4-3 next year somehow and had Hayward, Hargrave, to it all moving around and then able to draft or, you know, even bring in another guy who's able to get after the quarterback. And I'm not saying, you know, a top flight guy, just somebody who's good at stopping the run and can get get to the quarterback a little bit. I think that would actually help out mixing in the 4-3 with the 3-4. I don't think that they should really designate one over the other anymore. Yeah, the only thing is I think they're going to be looking at linebacker early in the draft next season. Probably you might see him go linebacker, D tackle, and maybe offensive line in the first three picks. I would say I think they could use some depth along that offensive line. We'll have to see what they're doing at wide receiver as well. Yeah, I believe that. But yeah, Speaking I'm very happy receivers. with how this defense looked, and offensively, it looked good from the start. They got off to a real hot start, put 21 points up in the first half, 14 of those up in the first quarter. But really, they kind of let off after that. And really, overall, I'm still not completely happy with this offense, although they did put up 28 points in this game. Yeah, I was happy they scored 28 points on the road. And I know Tolzien made it a little easier for the defense to be able to step up and make big plays. But the offense you know, still had to score points, even with Tolzien, you know, quarterback for the other team. So it was nice to see him put up 28. But you're right, it seemed... I don't know, a little, I don't know if I want to say inconsistent, but that's the best word I can think of right now. It's just not, it's still not doing what it could be doing. Although Ladarius Green looked good. I know he only caught two passes, but they were two deep passes. He looked a little more comfortable running routes. It looks like Ben's starting to look his way. And I honestly think if he keeps getting better game to game, that he could be that number two target opposite Antonio Brown. We want to see the run game work like it did in this game as well. Le'Veon Bell looked really good in this game, 120 yeah. yards and a touchdown. Feed him the rock. Yeah, and I mean, that's a reason why it kind of didn't look as exciting as usual. They were kind of leaning towards the run more in this game. Ben Roethlisberger threw just 20 passes, although he did have the three touchdowns. All to Antonio Brown. But again, outside of Antonio Brown, like you mentioned, Ladarius Green had those two big catches but outside of that, there was no one really that he was consistently looking at. And that's something we need to see here. I mean, you're not going up against the Indianapolis Colts defense every single week. So you're going to need other options. And it does look like Ladarius Green could be that guy. All those, those two plays, one of them, the first one I believe it was, it was kind of odd play where Ben was rolling out and he just lobbed it in the air and uh, Ladarius ran under it. And that was a great play and everything. It's just not something you're going to see very often. But I mentioned in the preview, I asked you if there was going to be a guy that goes over 50 yards outside of Antonio Brown in the passing game, and it was Ladarius Green. But I want to see Eli Rogers or Sammy Coates, definitely. Another zero-catch game for Sammy Coates. we got to see one of these receivers step up and be a reliable target for Ben. Did you see that Roethlisberger and now the team apparently has told A.B. to cut it out in the end zone? They're sick of it, and they they can't keep putting their kicking team and then their defense at that disadvantage. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, I agree. Um, Some of his dances are so stupid. It looks ridiculous. I'm embarrassed for him. Do you think A.B.'s a team player, or do you think he's a me? Uh, receivers, can a lot of them are both, man. I think he wants to win, no doubt, but he definitely wants to perform in those wins as well. Yeah, he gets a little upset. Did you see Brandon Cooks? I know this is totally off topic, but Brandon Cooks is, is pissed off down in New Orleans because he's not getting the ball thrown his way enough. Well, Michael Thomas out there is doing work, so it is what it is. Uh, you're right about receivers. They're, they're always divas, but if A.B. cuts off, the dancing in the end zone, I'm fine with anything else he does. You know what I mean? Because he, he does work hard. I ain't taking anything away. That guy goes out and performs week to week. He's definitely one of the top two receivers. Him and Julio are basically 1A and 1B. But he just needs to sometimes stop and think what's best for the team outside of what's best for the brand. That's my only beef with him. And Le'Veon got to drop that rap album. Yeah, I... You know, I don't know if I have a problem with the rap album as much as other people do. I don't care what he does in his free time. 
I, I he's terrible. So that's I think he that's why I don't want him to drop because, the album, man. He just sucks. Yeah, he, he's awful at it. Uh, I just I don't have a beef with him going and doing other things. There's all these idiots on social media just telling him get rid of this guy, cut this guy. We don't need this. You should be focused on football. Well, guess what? Sometimes to be focused on football, you need to take your mind off of it for a little bit because you'll get burnt out and hate it. So for Le'Veon to still love it, he needs to have a better, uh, you know, good life outside of football. But he's terrible at rap, so he might as well quit now. Did you see Carlos Williams got suspended? Yeah. I didn't like when we signed him. and I, We talked about it, and I said I thought it was a mistake for the Steelers to sign another guy with, you know, drug suspension history. It just didn't seem smart. I thought he was pretty good for Buffalo, and he was the brother of Vince Williams, so give him a chance. Why not? It didn't hurt you. No big deal. It's not like people are starting to hate on the Steelers because they signed that guy. Yeah, I understand. I just thought, I mean, like, and the whole Mike Vick thing, whatever his personal life was behind him, but I didn't think he was the right fit for the offense last year, and it just seems like sometimes Tomlin just goes and reaches for these guys, and they feel like they can fix them. We're not fixing our own players. We can't fix other people's. I was just excited to see the Steelers perform well in this game and get two wins in a row after dropping four in a row. And although Baltimore won, so they're still technically not in first place, Baltimore holds that tiebreaker. Uh, we kind of hold our own fate as far as the playoffs go, as long as we keep winning. Uh, probably can lose one more game and maybe two, but we definitely got to beat Baltimore. Yeah, and if you win Baltimore, it's nice. If if when you beat Baltimore, let's say they beat Baltimore, that's the second to last week of the season, well, you can pretty much, let's say they overtake them at that point, you can pretty much lock them in as a division winner because then they go play Cleveland in Pittsburgh. So that should be a definite win at that point. And they better not be lackadaisical in that game if it comes down to win and you win the division in that game. And I don't think they'd actually lose that. So... That Baltimore game is going to be huge. If you win that, you're pretty much set up to win the division. RG3 should be back by that game. He's been cleared for full contact, and they're going to evaluate him this week to see if he's ready to play. Well, I don't think that's going to help him any. Although, they've had some trouble with mobile quarterbacks in the past. Dude's just going to get broke again, that poor guy. What else, man? How about their punter? What's up with this guy? The Colts punter? Yeah. Pat McAfee, I like Pat McAfee. He's from Plum. He's on the Mark Madden show a lot. He does a lot of charity work. He's trying to work on his stand-up comedy in the off season. He has a podcast. I, I don't, I don't have a problem with the strut. I really don't. Uh, and people were bitching on social media because he didn't get fined, but AB did. But AB has been told about it, and he, I don't know, his dances are in the end zone. And I know it seems stupid and, and rudimentary, whatever, but, you know, McAfee didn't break a rule. AB did. That's why AB got the flag. And so I'm not, I don't have a beef there. And I kind of like, like Pat McAfee. I'd like the Steelers to get him, honestly. Last season, we complained a lot about the Pittsburgh Steelers kick return game. They started out with Dre Archer. They brought. <laughs> They brought over, who was, who was it they brought over? Jacoby Jones. Oh, yeah, Jacoby Jones. And he was even worse. we seen in this game, Jordan Todman had a 43-yard kick return. He also had three rushes for 37 yards, so he had a pretty solid game. Why not have kept him and made him your kick returner? Uh, I mean, we've had garbage kick returners for years, so, yeah, I agree. They decided to keep uh, Buttery Croissant instead of Todman. And I think that was the wrong move by the Steelers. Now, it might have been a money thing. You know, I'm not really sure on that end. But I think Todman is definitely the better player of the two. And you're right. It'd be nice to see somebody get one past the 30-yard line on a kickoff. Have we even got past the 30 yet this year on a kickoff? Oh, I can't remember. Sammy Coates had a 21-yard return in this game. It's ridiculous. Was... I mean, we are teams are probably, you know scheming to not kick it in the end zone because they know we can barely get it past the 20s. So they're just like, eh, just let them screw themselves. I will say, Dre Archer was leading the league when they cut him. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Dude's garbage. <laughs> I mean, he was better than anything else we had since. Yeah, you know what? I always thought there might be something else to that. You know what I mean? Maybe there was something that went on behind the scenes that we never well, I don't doubt it because you remember he when... He tried to make a little comeback, or somebody tried to sign him, and he just didn't show up or something. Yeah, yeah. So I there was, was something the Jets, wrong there. Maybe. Yeah. So who's your, uh, well, defensive player of the game? 
I'm going to give it to Lawrence Timmons again. He led the team in tackles, 10 tackles, two assisted. He didn't have a sack or a forced fumble or a pick. But this is a guy who didn't get a contract extension. His backup did get a contract extension. All the talk is that he's going to be out of Pittsburgh next year. I've even said it. And yet he still comes in every day and performs well. And he seems to be getting better as the year goes on, if you ask me. And I really like him coming off the edge. I hope they keep mixing him in in that pass rush. And I hope they keep rushing the passer. But I'm giving it to old man Timmons again. He's been a staple in this defense for years. I love this dude. Yeah, this defense was flying to the ball in this game. All four linebackers look good. All four starting linebackers, I should say. Uh, Harrison had another sack in this game. Ryan Shazier had six tackles. He had a QB hit. Lawrence Timmons led the team in tackles. Bud Dupree looks pretty solid on his way back. They actually, I heard something about they're, they're going to be, it, it's Harrison and Dupree at this point are their top yeah. two outside linebackers. And I like what I've seen out of Javon Hargrave and Stefan Tewitt up front. Now, Tewitt didn't have big numbers in this game, but he was moving around and making plays as well. But I'm going to go with Willie Gay, man. He had a sack in this game and had a pick as well. And this is a guy people were down on this season, lost his job to Artie Burns pretty much. You know, I think Willie Gay can play better in the slot. He's, you know, historically been a better slot corner than an outside corner. So I think it's actually a blessing in disguise for him for Artie to take the job. I mean, that just means Burns is playing better. If he's locking up players on the outside and Cockrell's doing an okay job on the other side, that gives Gay a lot of opportunities in the slot. You know, he can actually go after some passes because we. I'm pretty sure he's tied for, like, the league lead a couple years ago with pick sixes. What did he have, like, three pick sixes or six pick sixes or something like that? Yeah, I think he had five in a row or something like that. Yeah, I think ridiculous. Was... I mean, this guy knows what to do with the ball whenever he gets it in his hands. So uh, I think it'll be a blessing in disguise. And you're right, he had, he did have a good game. And I like to see him against those slot, cor- or slot receivers because he's a little bit smaller of a corner. So it makes it a little easier for him. How about offensively? I'll just give it to Le'Veon Bell, obviously. He had a good game on the ground. He had a touchdown. He had, what, like almost a buck 50 rushing? 120. And also had four catches for 22 yards. Mm, yeah, so this guy's on my fantasy team. I want him to keep feeding him the rock so that we can keep winning. I'll give it to Antonio. Did Andrew Jones throw a pass? Did Ben get hurt for a play in this game? Come out for one play, Landry Jones went in? I don't remember. I can't remember why he was in there. He's garbage. I'll give it to Antonio Brown just because of the three touchdowns. A B baby all day league leader in touchdowns right now. Yeah, he's still balling. Probably the best receiver in football still. Julio would have something to say about that. Yeah, he's good too. I'll take Antonio. Take them both. It'd be nice. I want them to bring over Jarvis Landry. That'd be nice. I just want them to bring in anybody that can catch the football opposite A.B. because it seems like nobody else really wants to other than Le'Veon. I like Eli Rogers. I think Ben got to look his way a little bit more. Two, like I said, two catches in his game, 36 yards, but he only had two targets as well. So not that they needed it, though. I guess I want to see it when they need it. Right. Yeah, it looks like they're going to start leaning on that running game a little bit more since they're having a hard time finding a, you know somebody opposite of A.B. So as long as it's working and they're winning, I'm happy. I tell you what, if you want to give offensive player of the game to the offensive line in any week, this is the week to do it as well. They look very good in this game. They were open up huge holes for Le'Veon. Some people have said Alejandro Villanueva has taken a step back from last year. What do you think? Oh, well, step back from what? I mean, it was pretty much his first season of getting non-limited playing time, you know, so... I don't know. I don't think it was a step back at all. I don't think re- people really thought he was great by any means. He's just a solid piece on the line. Would you have kept Beecham over him? No way, man. I'm sticking with the veteran. Believe it. That's it. Fans, questions, comments, want to celebrate the Steelers' victory on Turkey Day, hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out that Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube. Look out for that Steelers preview show. The Giants are going down.